Hi, Wesley. Um, we're going to go through the JS Psych tutorial line by line uh, here. And a general goal, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. Uh, we'll see if we can get all the way through it. We'll learn about these things called JS Psych plugins. We can see some of them here. There's a plugin to make a welcome message, a plugin to make some instructions, a plugin, um, and another one here. Uh, yeah, so we'll talk about that. You'll see that there's lots more plugins that you can put in here. And uh, one thing you can mess around with this week is uh, trying your own code and swapping out the plugins just to see how they work. With that, let's get started. So I've opened up, I mean, I'm in uh, a blogging post here. I've got a folder called JS Psych Tutorial, and we're looking at index.html. If you were to go to JS Psych and look at the tutorial section, this is the code from the reaction time test. You scroll all the way to the bottom, and we copied out this code. And that's over here. All right, let's jump in. Um, but bef how about this? I think this could be useful. You've probably seen this already. Uh, what does this code do? We can see the output by running this HTML file in our web browser. So I've got that loaded up over here in Firefox. I'm just pressing reload. We could see what's happening. It says, welcome to the experiment. Press any key to begin. We see some instructions. Um, if the circle is blue, press the F key. If it's orange, press the J key. And how about I do that? I'm gonna to try to do this as fast as I can for each one. Orange, blue, blue. There's not that many trials here. So it's just a sample experiment in a normal reaction time test like that. There might be hundreds of trials or even a thousand trials. It could take 20 minutes or an hour. Behind the scenes, JS Psych is measuring which button you pressed for every trial and if it was correct. And on average, how long it took you to press the button uh, in response to the stimulus. So it's measuring the reaction time, which is the difference between uh, when the stimulus was presented and how long it took you to press the button. It's reporting some of those things right here on the screen for us, telling me that I got 100% correct and my average response time was 494 milliseconds. Should be able to do faster than that. Oh, well. We have a message, press any key to complete the experiment. I'm gonna do that, uh, should I do that now? Give me one second before I do that because I'm going to head over in Firefox to the developer tools and I'm gonna turn on web developer tools. So now we're in the JavaScript console and let me see if I can, yeah, so we have JS Psych. This is being loaded as a JavaScript library. And uh, I wonder if I can access some of the data. No, there's gotta be a way to do it. I'm pretty sure, maybe not. Maybe it's this. JS psych dot data dot get. And yes, what I'm showing you is there is a JavaScript object here that contains information from every trial in this experiment. So I'm just scrolling through this for you mainly to show you that uh, we can interact with the behind the scenes code in our experiment. And, and we've stored the data. I'm going to click up into the experiment again and press a button. And what's happened here is uh, there's a printout of the data object has been 
displayed on the screen. And this can be helpful for testing when you want to just take a quick look at the end to see if parts of your experiment are working. Normally, when we code a, an experiment that we'd like to run, uh, we'll send the data somewhere else and not display it on the screen at the end. A few more bits to notice about this experiment before talking more about this code. Uh, there is two stimuli on each, or there's a two possible stimuli, a blue circle and orange circle, right? You've been told to press the F key for this one, the J key for that one. I don't know if you noticed, but on each trial, there's a little plus sign that pops up and that's called a fixation cross. It's intended to warn people that a stimulus is about to happen. And it turns out that the delay between the fixation cross and the onset of the stimulus is actually manipulated here. And it's not the same time every time. You might notice that here, see how the video works, but that was a kind of a long delay. That was the same length. Another long one. That's even longer. Longer. That was pretty quick. That was quick. Uh, so in this experiment, the manipulation was uh, how long the delay was between the fixation cross and the stimulus. And um, your reaction time to detect the stimulus might depend on uh, that duration. So that's the main manipulation. Okay, so now that we, we see what's going on here, let's turn to the example code. One more thing I will say, uh, this is just a simple experiment that has a trial by trial structure where on each trial something happens with specific properties and people give a kind of response to it. And all of what happened and what the responses were are collected as a measurement in the data file. And JSX is a very useful library. You can uh, have a lot of control over what happens on each trial, what the stimuli are, uh, what the properties are, and what kinds of responses you collect. I'm just going to start simple. Okay, so we're now heading over to the index.html. The first thing it says is doc type HTML. I don't think there's anything at the bottom closing that. Based on last week, we were talking about HTML documents starting with HTML like this and ending with the slash HTML. We see that here. We talked about the head portion of an HTML document, and that is right here. We see the head. We see the end of it. The body portion in our case is here, but there's nothing in it that's empty. The other portion is a script portion. Okay, so three main things. The script portion, I guess you could put it in the head or in the body or just outside of both of them, just like we see here. So there's these three big components. As an overall concept, the script portion and the libraries behind this script are uh, systematically, as the experiment happens, um, controlling what elements get placed into the body programmatically through JavaScript. Uh, so we don't actually have any elements in here, and we put them all in here using stuff in the script. We're going to start at the very top of the head statement, and we have a title. This is metadata. If you look in the Firefox window up at the top, the name of the tab is the name of this title. I believe if I change this, if I reload, it's, it's changing the name in the tab. Next, we have three individual script lines. These scripts, let's just take a look at one of them. 
are slightly different than the ones we see down here. So it's a script element. It starts with script and it ends with slash script, just like this one. However, notice the difference. This one here, there's nothing inside. This is empty. There's no content inside of this script element. This script element has a lot of content in it. However, the script element up here has an additional parameter called SRC, and that stands for source. And what's going on here is we're uh, essentially going out to a file location. In this case, it is a URL. So this is a location on the internet. Uh, I wonder what happens if we grab, press copy, go over to Firefox and paste that in. We go to this location on the internet. And what do you see here is a big JavaScript file. All right, so this is a JavaScript library. And when we uh, put it right here like this, uh, when you run your experiment, like for example, when I reload this experiment, what's happening is at the beginning of loading, uh, the web browser is going to this website, this one over here, grabbing all of that JavaScript and loading it in to the JavaScript engine. This JavaScript defines a whole bunch of JS psych functions that then become available down here. And in general, uh, in order to use JS psych and the plugins associated with it, you need to make sure you load the JavaScript library that's right here and make sure you load each individual plugin that you use. And in this case, there are uh, one, two, three functions that are used. Something called plugin HTML keyboard response, plugin image keyboard response, and plugin preload. Finally, this isn't a JavaScript, but it is um, loading into the header something called a CSS document. We could also probably go see what that looks like. We haven't talked about CSS yet. Here it is. And this is short for cascading style sheet. This is a um, syntax and useful method for styling HTML elements. For example, uh, the what font is going to be used here? How big will the letters be? All of those things, um, what does it look in the feel of this website? Those things are being defined in this CSS style sheet. Uh, yeah, and all of these are av available from these internet locations. It's also possible to obtain each of these things and have them on your local system. And am I gonna talk about that? Yes, I am gonna talk about that because that could be very helpful for you to understand which plugins are available to you. There's only three right here, but there's many more. If you wanna learn about plugins on JS Psych, you can go to the website, click on plugins, and you will see the list of plugins. All of these ones are available to you. So we're looking at plugin HTML keyboard response right here. When you click on one of those, you get an explanation of how it works and what its purpose is. We'll learn more about these. 
briefly, this is a very general plugin that when, when you use it, uh, on each trial, you can display some HTML. And as you know, there's lots of different HTML elements. So this is a very general thing. Whatever you put in there can be displayed on the screen. If you put a word in a paragraph, you'll see a word. If you put a word and a button and a picture, you'll see all those things. Whatever you put in the HTML portion, uh, so here we have a something called an HTML string, will be turned into the stimulus. And then this plugin will wait for a keyboard response and uh, it will record which button was pressed and how long it took to get pressed and save it all in a data file. So it's a really general useful function. Another one that we see here is plugin image keyboard response. And this is slightly less general. Where is it? Plugin image right here. Uh, here you give it the name of an image and it will show the image for you and then wait for a button response and collect that. Okay, now let's say you wanted to get all of these and try them out for yourself. How do you obtain the JS Psych library? A benefit of doing this on your local computer is that when you load the files here, you don't have to rely on an external server. It's possible that I reload this button and unpackage.com, whatever that is, it might be down for a second. And then the website won't load because it was unable to access these files. If the files are on my own computer or on my own server, then I don't have to worry about that problem. So where do we get them? Under JS Psych, there's a GitHub link here. So we want to go to the GitHub page for JS Psych. Here it is. This is the source code. This is everything. But if you go to the releases section, then you can obtain the latest JS Psych uh, stuff. The distribution archive right here, you can download it. So I just clicked that, downloaded it to my computer. And let's see, I got, uh, well, this is what I got. I got a file called JS Psych. Um, I think I've done this multiple times. So mine got called JS Psych 2, because I think it's the second one that I have in my downloads folder. I'm just going to copy it and get it into, whoops. No, I... Okay, I'm just pasting it into where my index.html file is. So let's take a look at what we have in here. I'm going to do some renaming and, and stuff. Uh, I want to call this JS Psych, I think, not JS Psych 2. In the folder, we have a license, some a readme explaining things, contributors to the code base. This is free and open source software. There's some examples that you can uh, learn from. And the, the JS Psych library itself is in here called the dist file or the dist folder. So the first thing I want to do is see if I can use these local files and change this stuff up top. So I'm using the local files and not the online files. Um, let's try this. The source is gonna be the JS psych folder slash dist slash js psych dot js. I don't know. Is that going to work? Let's see. 
I should be able to reload this. And nope, JS Psych is not responding. Uh, must be doing something wrong here. Not exactly sure. Hmm. Hmm. This is a good question. I thought I knew what I was doing. Let me pause this and make sure I understand the syntax. <clears throat> 